Have you ever wondered how someone survives on just $2 a day? It's a question that leads us into the heart of a book called Portfolios of the Poor, How the World's Poor Live on Dollar Two a Day. This groundbreaking work takes us on a journey into the complex financial lives of the world's poor, challenging our perceptions and offering unique insights into poverty and financial behavior. The authors of this book, Daryl Collins, Jonathan Morduk, Stuart Rutherford and Orlando Ruthven, delve into the financial diaries of families in Bangladesh, India and South Africa. These diaries, meticulously kept, offer a detailed account of the income, expenses and financial transactions of households living on meagre incomes. The result is a rich tapestry of resilience and resourcefulness, a testament to the adaptive strategies and financial ingenuity of those living in poverty. One key insight from the book is the myriad ways in which individuals access financial services and leverage them to improve their livelihoods. From the use of informal savings groups to the reliance on microfinance institutions, the authors highlight the diverse financial tools and innovations employed by the poor to manage their money and mitigate risks. A particularly interesting finding revolves around the use of informal financial practices. For example, rotating savings and credit associations, also known as ROSCAs, and moneylenders often provide crucial support to the poor. These informal mechanisms fill the gaps left by formal financial institutions and offer lessons for designing inclusive and responsive financial systems. The implications of these findings are significant for efforts to promote financial inclusion and empower underserved communities. The book underscores the importance of understanding the financial behaviours and challenges faced by the poor. With this understanding, policymakers, practitioners and financial institutions can design interventions that address the unique needs of low-income households. In essence, the book advocates for a client-centric approach to financial inclusion. It emphasizes the need for financial services that cater to the specific needs and realities of low-income individuals. It speaks to the importance of fostering social networks, building financial capabilities and promoting access to affordable and suitable financial products for those living in poverty. In conclusion, Portfolios of the Poor provides a compelling and insightful look into the financial lives of the world's poor. It challenges us to rethink our perceptions of poverty and financial behavior, and it underscores the importance of inclusive financial services. The financial diaries of these families, their resilience and resourcefulness, serve as a reminder that understanding poverty requires looking beyond stereotypes and assumptions. By highlighting the agency and resilience of the poor, the book calls for an approach to financial inclusion that is informed by the realities and needs of those it seeks to serve. It's a call to action for all of us to work towards a more inclusive and equitable financial system. So as we move forward, let us remember the lessons from portfolios of the poor and strive to create financial solutions that truly serve the underserved.